we haven't talked to you since the Carson Wentz acquisition and, and everything has happened. How did you guys arrive at the decision to go after Carson? Yeah, well, um, first of all, Carson has an incredible skill set. You know, second overall pick in the draft. Guy's got a great arm, um, great athlete, uh, and so, and obviously a great person as well. Um, you know, we talked through a lot of different quarterbacks, a lot of different scenarios. We talked about, you know, trading for one, drafting one, um, every op option available to us, um, and settled on Carson. We feel like he's going to be an outstanding player for us, you know. Um, he's got a good history as a starter in this league. And um, from our standpoint, we really needed a guy who had some experience the more we talked about it. And uh, he was the best option for us. How do you balance all the positive you, you mentioned there about Carson with the fact that he's been traded twice in two years? Yeah, you know what? You got to look at the, the, the total situation there. And we did a lot of investigation of what happened in Philly and what happened in Indy and had really good talks with, uh, with Frank. Frank's a former teammate of mine, Frank Reich. From Buffalo, and I know he's talked a lot with Coach, um, and I talked a lot with Chris Ballard about the situation there. We, we felt very comfortable. Martin, what kind of, now you've got a quarterback now, and it's year three of a program. I know it's your second year here. Does this put an extra a layer of pressure to go out and win now, or you know, now that you got your guy? <laughs> pressure? <laughs> There's always pressure to go out and win every single game. I mean, that's the expectation. We're in this thing to win. Uh, we're always in it to win, and every team's in the same situation, you know, as far as the pressure. It's always there. Uh, so this doesn't change anything for us. Did you guys believe there was competition to get Carson Wentz? Because um, I know there were some reports that you came up in your offer to, you know, get the yeah. third and conditional third. Yeah. Did you believe that there was yeah. or well, other teams in Well, the mix? when you look at the quarterback situation in the, in the NFL right now, I think everybody's seen the value of, of, of that position. I mean, based on what Tampa did once they got Tom Brady and once L, what L.A. got Matthew Stafford, what they were able to do. Um, and I think, you know, this, it's just a question of supply and demand, you know, um, and there are not enough good quarterbacks to go around. Uh, so we had an opportunity to get a guy who we felt great about, and we were going to be aggressive about that. Do you feel like that urgency to find that guy is greater than ever now in the league? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the last two Super Bowls, those teams went out and acquired a quarterback that season, and they won a championship. You know? And uh, I think people are realizing now the importance of that position. It's always been understood, but not, that was, those were two great examples of, of what you can do when you have one understanding that not everybody can land Russell Wilson. The, the knock has always been that big name free agents don't want to come to Washington. Do you feel like you and Ron have been working to change that perspective? What do you have to do to, to make it an attractive destination? Yeah, I don't know if I would agree with that. I mean, we, we've had talks with a lot of agents about players who want to come to Washington, you know. Um, so I wouldn't agree with that assessment. Um, obviously, everybody has their own personal preference. And free agency is that, that kind of deal. I mean, if you have good players, they have options. Um, but we don't feel like there's any stigma on Washington as far as players coming to us. Has the kind of continuing changing land, landscape at quarterbacks given you pause on maybe how quickly you acted for Wentz? Like, did you think Matt Ryan would become available or now what looks like Baker is going to be available? Has that changed the prism through you view you, the move? Uh, not at all. We talked to a lot of people about a lot of different quarterbacks, and we had a good sense of who was going to be available, who wasn't going to be available to us, and uh, we felt very comfortable making that decision. Do you, does it change your approach to the draft now and, and your willingness to draft a quarterback? Um, you know, I won't get into that too much. I mean, obviously, we have some decisions to make there, and uh, I don't want to lose any competitive advantage as far as that. Um, so you know, we'll see what happens in the draft. Brown said it. After you got Wentz, it forced you guys to kind of change your plan, your initial thinking and free agency. How did you guys have to adjust after that? Yeah, well, um, you know, there were some, we, we had some guys internally that were on our team that we wanted to have with us, and we're still working through some of that. Uh, we had a number of guys we had targeted outside of our team as well. Um, and so it's, it's, it's free agency is an ongoing process, and it doesn't end after the first couple of weeks. So we're still talking through what's available to us and what's not, and, uh, and we'll continue on that process. How would you describe your plan in free agency? Like you said, it's still ongoing, but the bulk of it is still, the rush is kind of over. What, do you, what was your guys' plan going into it? We had a number of our own players that we wanted to have back. Um, Cam Sims was a priority for us. J.D. McKissick was a, was a priority for us. Um, we were able to get uh, most of the guys on our team that we had last year, and get those guys back with us, and that was important to us. And, um, and we'll see, see what, what happens you know, going forward. Now that you have this going forward, you know, one of the things people always talk about, the extension for guys like Terry McLaurin, Deron Payne, 
Um, at what point do you think that becomes a more serious discussion to extend those guys or, you know, or negotiations even? Yeah, you know, um, we've had discussions with both those agents, and we're going to leave that between us and them right now. When you look around the league at some of the big contracts wide receivers have gotten, does that start, is that, do you, is that your baseline, or is that what you kind of use as a, as a, as a rule of thumb for as you as discussing with Terry and Zayton? Yeah, um, you know, when you're doing those kinds of deals, you have to look at comparables, and that's that's what what, what, what we plan on doing. We'll look at the comparables, and we'll we'll start start that process. What do you guys have now, just on paper? Do you feel like this team is close to becoming a contender? Yeah, you know, I can't really speak on that. I mean, I, I think when you start thinking in that way, I think you lose sight of what's important. And what's really important, I think, is getting better every day and trying to improve every single day. You know, I've been on two teams that went to a championship and we never really talked about that. It was really a, all about continual improvement every single day. And when the guys show up and they start get back here and start working again, it's going to be about getting our football team better every single day. We get to camp, that's going to be what our focus is, and we'll see where it all, where it all ends. Talking about improving. What does he give you that maybe has been missing or whatever? Yeah, well, first of all, an, an elite skill set. An elite skill set at the quarterback position. You're talking about a guy that's six foot five, a guy who's a, who's a tremendous athlete, guy with a great arm. He can make plays down the field. Uh, he can see the field, see the entire field. Uh, he can read coverages. He can go through progressions. So he has an elite skill set at the quarterback position, and he make, he, he has the ability to make everybody around him better. The uh, the wide receiver market. A, a lot of guys are getting big deals around the league. Does it say something about how the how teams are? valuing that position these days by by the way these contracts are kind of going up well I, I think the quarterback and, and wide receiver position are both uh, premium positions right now the way the game is being played um, and it's just the nature, nature of the beast I mean it changes from time to time as to what's really what's key and what's really important and, and, and where all the money flows um, but we recognize the importance of both those positions and we'll we'll act accordingly you and Ron both talked about this offseason, the need at quarterback, and it appears you filled that need for now. What kind of goes to the top of the list for you? Yeah, I won't get into that. I mean, there's, there's things that we're looking for. I don't want to get into a lot of details about it, um, just from a competitive you know, standpoint. Um, but we have needs. And, you know, I could say, you know, what I said before, we need good football players across the board. So then you talk about improving and getting better each day. Ron, when he was kind of doing his spiel for why a quarterback should want to come here, he, he often talked about the performance of the offensive line. Two new guards coming in, do you expect that to be improved better or, or as good? How's that going to shake out? Well, first, I mean, going back to last year, I can't say enough about the great job that Coach Matsko and Travell Wharton did with our offensive line. You know, we got to our fourth center. We got to our third or fourth guard. Uh, those guys never dropped off. You know, uh, the talent level is there with those guys, and the coaching is there with that group. Uh, we want to continually be strong on both lines, on both sides of the ball. We want to be strong up the middle. Um, so we want, we're focused on having a quality offensive line this year and a quality defensive line, and, and you know, that, that's important to us. This is your second year uh, in the front office with everybody kind of here together. How has it been going for you guys this year? The flow of information, chain of command, whatever it may be. How's it kind of going this year? Yeah, it's going well. It's going well. We have a really good group of guys, myself, uh, Marty, uh, you know, Eric Stokes, Chris Polian, Gribbs. We all work very well together, you know, um, and there's no egos involved. Uh, we all know, know what, our, what our roles are, and we all perform in those roles well, I think. This being your first owner's meeting with Washington, what do you, what do you like to get out of this time here in yeah, well, you learn a lot. You learn about what the trends are in the league. You learn about kind of where the emphasis and focus is going to be uh, going forward. Uh, we had a lot of discussion um, today about uh, some of the rules that might change and uh, some of those kinds of things. So it's good to get here and also see some of the other GMs and talk to them about what they're doing with, with their teams. Um, so, I mean, it's always good to get together with everybody. And to do it now in person, having not been able to do that for a couple of years, it's, it's pretty nice too. So uh, I'm enjoying it so far. Is this, is this another opportunity to have those side discussions with other teams if need be about, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. There's a lot There's a lot that's talked about. There's a lot that's talked about, um, you know, uh, draft positioning. Um, I had some talks about that with some other GMs. Um, and then, you know, some other things, uh, you know, in terms of how, how you function and operate as a team, those things are important as well. And some background on some players, you know. You may want to get some background on, on new players or players who, who have gone other places. People are asking you about them. So uh, it's, it's a good place to exchange information and uh, 
and just talk about different things, you know, related to your team. Did you, you get you, a sense? Do you get a sense? Can you start to get a sense of like which players might be released after the draft? The team X drafts at this position. You might be able to get this guy. Like last year, you get Charles Leno. You trade for Eric Flowers. Do you get a? Do you have a decent sense of how teams think about that? You can get some ideas from that. Um, you know, we won't get any definitive answers, but you know, um, there, there's some usually some things you can pick up from talking with teams about where they feel they're strong and where they feel they need to add people and and things like that come up. So, yeah. Ron's been very big on year three being the year to take a big jump. Has that kind of been your experience? Do you agree with like? I mean, I know everybody wants to take a jump any times, but year three seems to be the one he's always pushed. Yeah. Is that in your experience a year for teams like when you're building this way to take that next? Big step. I think that is important. Um, obviously, you know, last year was a disappointment for us. We, we expect to do a lot better this year, and that's the goal of ours. And I think that's really important that we're able to do that. So we're really focused on improving this year, getting better. And like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a daily process. It's something we focus on every day. Um, it's trying to be better and trying to play better this fall. You had two defensive rookies, Jamin and, and Sanju, who were up and down. What, what did you learn from them in their rookie years that will help you position them to take that leap forward in their second year? Yeah, well, I've been doing this for a minute, you know, and um, there have been rookies that typically it takes a while to not be a rookie, you know. Um, and I think those guys both went through some rookie growing pains last year. We have high expectations for both of those guys. They certainly had flashes when they were really good and what we expected and what we want from them every single down. And it's just about putting that together consistently and putting that on the field from, you know, game in, game out. Some of the injured guys, um, any, have you talked with Curtis Samuel at all, seen him, has he been around? I haven't seen Curtis. Uh, I've been staying in touch with Chase. Chase and I have been in contact uh, quite a bit this off season. Um, you know, everybody has sort of their own program right now. We're actually not allowed to talk to the players during the dead period, you know, about some things. So, um, you know, waiting on the guys to get back and looking forward to seeing them when they get back and kind of where they are physically and we'll go from there. But if they, if they choose to rehab at the facility, they're allowed to, right? They certainly are, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned talks of draft positioning. Are, are, does that imply that you guys are kind of open for business at number 11 or? Yeah, I think everybody's sort of filling everybody out right now. And, uh, and we've had, I've had some conversations uh, with a couple of GMs about where they are, where they're positioned and where we are, and if there's a possibility for something as far as movement. Is that both directions? I can't really comment on that. We'll see where it goes, you know? <laughs> yeah. But you, kinda, you, kinda, you try to get a feel for kind of where everybody is and, and how comfortable that they are where, where they are. And do they want to go up or want to go back? The fans, uh, I think, certainly ask us, what are we, what's our grade for what you guys have done? And obviously, you do have the quarterback, but there's a lot of other things that are still up in the air that's maybe even a little more less depth than some spots you had before, still waiting on a Mike linebacker. Is it fair to say the grade is sort of incomplete right now until you guys get more things done? Yeah, I mean, well, it's pretty early in the process from my standpoint. I mean, you know, still, you know, March, you know, we start planning it in, uh, in the fall. So we've got until September, really, to be totally ready. Um, as far as Mike, you know, we, we feel like Cole Holcomb has a chance to, to go in there and play Mike for So there's not a tremendous urgency to go and do something right there. He did a good job when he was in there. He kind of grew in that position last year when he had an opportunity to play some Mike. And we'll see how, see how it plays out. Ron had been emphasizing that position, though, throughout since the end of the season, that that was a, a, a position that you were looking at. Is that something that has changed during the course of this process? Yeah, no, I just, Cole, Cole's an option. Cole's an option for us. And uh, like I said, he improved each game that he was in there at Mike. So we feel comfortable uh, going forward with him if it comes to that. So we're, we're, we're going to take a look at him at Mike and see how it goes. With a guy like Jamin talking about the linebacker position, where at, at least early on you guys were – trying to see if he could make it as a Mike. Do you feel like that maybe slowed him down and maybe this offseason it's all outside and, and he can really excel? Yeah, you know, I can't really speak. That's a good question for Coach on that. Um, but, yeah, like I said, Jamin has some growing pains as a rookie, um, and um, it's not uncommon. It's not uncommon. I think his talent and his, uh, his physical ability, um, his desire, his football character is going to pull him through. He's going to be a good player for us. I'm very confident saying that. In terms of roster building, just a general philosophical question. Um, are, are there certain positions that you feel are, are better suited for veterans in, in terms of like acquiring free agency talent there versus getting a, a rookie or and really molding a, a drafted pick there? Yeah, no, not really. I mean, I, I think sometimes when you take a rookie at a certain position, I think you have to understand it takes a while you know, for the player to get a complete grasp of what it's like playing that position in the NFL. 
Um, and then some positions, you take a rookie and you expect more of an immediate um, uh, effect on your team or, or you know, you expect uh, probably a better performance early from, say, a running back than you would from a quarterback or, say, a middle linebacker, you know. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think I've been around it long enough to know that it takes – it's different for different guys to adjust to the NFL game, and some guys make a quick adjustment, and some guys don't. You know, but if you have the if you have the ability, and you have the right mindset, the right frame of mind, um, and you have the right football character, as I said, then usually it works out well. Just another kind of general roster building question. More and more around the league, it seems like teams are getting really aggressive towards the cap, restructuring, pushing money back. How do you feel like that works out? Because eventually it. it catches up or teams able to just push it off in perpetuity you said it eventually catches up to you <laughs> eventually catches up to you yeah so to that point you guys look like you added a bunch of void years to the deal that you did do with bobby mccain and some others these weren't the biggest deals typically things like void years are for larger deals to push money back just just curious why the why, why did you guys do void years and why is that becoming more of a trend around the league well, you know, I can't speak for everybody else. I mean, from our standpoint, uh, we want to have room uh, for other other moves. We want to have room during the season. You need room for injuries. You need room for practice squad. So, um, you know, we don't want to get down to bare bones and have to do something, have to do something with somebody later. If we can do it on the front end, it, it's, it works a lot better to do it then. Is that the same general thinking for making land in a post-June 1? Cut exactly. Right. For, right. Have it later. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the idea is, you know, you you have enough room going into the season where you're comfortable. If you got to make a, room, a move at the trade deadline or make a move during the season, that you're able to do that. Is there like a number in general that you kind of look at? Would like to have this amount of money when the season starts? There is. Yeah. 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 There is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you used to being the commanders yet? Ah, you, know, I, I, you know, I, I still mess up every now and then. I still get that a little twisted, but I'm working on it. Yeah, I'm getting used to it. I like it. It's going well for us. Yeah. Do people respond to it, like, the, you know, when you're talking to players and stuff, like, you got to... People definitely want to talk about it. That's for sure. Yeah, they want to talk about that. You know, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I mean, the process that we went through and, and getting here now and now actually being here, it seems like it was a long time coming, so I'm glad we finally got that done. Having played for the team and won with the team, were there emotional ties to the old name for you that you kind of had to put aside as you guys went through this process? Yeah, it probably just made it a little harder for me to remember to be the Washington football team and then to be the commanders because I had been the other name for so long, you know, or right. I've been identified with that for so long. So, um, but I'm glad that we are where we are. How do you handle, I assume you have some memorabilia or old jerseys or certainly a Super Bowl ring. Like, how do you handle hanging on to all that? Do you think you're not doing anything with your ring, but other things? Do you look to change them out? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I got, I have some red skin stuff. I mean, I'll probably keep it, yeah. you know, put on eBay or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of that, like, what, what did it, we may have asked you this at some point, what did it mean to play in the nation's capital? as opposed to like any other city you played in other places what did it mean to actually play in the nation's capital yeah it was it was it was really cool i mean and you know i used to like i probably mentioned before i mean it was it was it felt really special to be in the nation's capital i mean when i was going to the games i would drive down constitution avenue so i could see you know the washington monument and the white house and all that in the capital I and mean, i mean that was, so that was it made me feel good going to the stadium and representing the nation's capital. Um, and so it is important. And uh, I like the name that we have. I think it kind of reflects some flavor of being in, in the nation's capital. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I love it here. It's my third time moving back here. Moved here to play, moved here for law school, moved back here again. So um, it's a great uh, part of the country, and I plan to be around there for a while. Get him back to RFK? Do your part? I have nothing to do with that. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, that's a Jason Wright question right there. I don't know. Yeah. As hard as the football stuff is, do you envy at all dealing with the stadium side of things? No, not at all. Not at all. They can have that. They can have that. Yeah. Jason's got a handle on it, though. He'll take care of it. Yeah. Back to the quarterback thing just for a second, just sort of broadly. 
obviously you guys made a trade, but a lot of teams made moves this year with quarterback. Did something cha- You always want a quarterback, I get that. But did something change this offseason, do you think, mindset around the league, whether it was watching the playoffs or something else, that teams were like, hey, we really need to go make make this happen? It may have, I mean, you, you watch those playoff games, and you see uh, how impactful having a great quarterback is. I mean, you're down. You got 13 seconds left. You're able to come back and get right back in it. You know, I mean, so you see those kinds of things happen, and it, it, it definitely is a supply and demand issue in this league. There are not 32 top-tier quarterbacks in the National Football League, so every, every year some teams are going out there and playing without one, you know. Um, from our standpoint, I mean, going back to last year, I mean, our starter played 16 snaps last year. People forget that. And, but, you know, our starter played 16 plays, and he was done for the year. And, and, and Taylor, you know, much respect to him. Um, I can't say enough about the great job that he did for us coming in, stepping in and playing almost the entire season for us. Tremendous respect for him. Um, but we felt like we need to upgrade that position. And we, we have a guy now with an elite skill set, as I said before. Speaking of that then, was there ever a conversation about working on Carson's deal when he, when he got here? Um, I won't really get into that at all. I think uh, we're glad to have him and uh, excited about what the future holds. One last uh, specific question. Uh, mm-hmm. DeAndre Carter, is there still interest in, in trying to work something out with him? Is he one of those that you talked about? As yeah, I spoke to his agent yesterday, and like I said, I'll keep those those conversations between us, but I spoke to, to Buddy Baker yesterday about DeAndre.